Hello, ladies and gents. <laughs> uh, apologies if this isn't the most professional map introduction video ever. However, I'm going to go through right now and talk about maps in the Wandering Warriors Cup. If you didn't see the trailer, you should check out the trailers. It is a $25,000 tourney in AOE2. It starts this week, and all the best stuff's coming to YouTube. All the best stuff's going to be on the stream, and we have eight maps. So, first and foremost, the very first map is Nomad. And the reason we have to talk about this is because it is very different from standard Nomad. So I'm going to go through and show you the differences. And then, you know, hopefully we can get excited. So let's look at standard DE Nomad right now. Notice the difference? Standard DE Nomad always has water in a full circle. So almost every single time you want to dock, and that's going to be the case for our Nomad. However, where you dock isn't really something you have to be as picky on. I'll generate a bunch of di different generations. This is actually super funny that there's a pond in the middle because this rarely happens for this nomad. But as you look, it's normally like a circle with water around the ring. And that's about it. Um, the spacing, uh, in terms of direction, you can go on land. It's always the same. It's just very consistent. Now, if you go to Wandering Warriors Nomad, we're going to take a look at that right now. We've made it a little different. So, uh, as you can see here, you know, you can dock, but you can also access the water over here. Um, I, I'm going to actually zoom out more. We look at the next generation. We look at the next generation. And wow, okay, so docking is possible, but it actually connects to the edge of the map here. Which means that if you dock maybe on this side, and someone docks over on this side, it takes longer for them to get there. And that means that it's not just a fight for water every game type of scenario. You look again, you got more water towards the center. Occasionally, there's also crossings here, FYI, which we might see with these generations. But yeah, then you look at this gen, and this looks a little more similar to the other Nomad we were seeing. You can see this is actually connected here. So the point is, it's Nomad. You don't start with a TC. You don't have a guarantee of getting any resource, but it adds a bit more variety to the, um, to the docking aspect, which I think is really important. As for the other resources, you know, other resources are spread throughout. Uh, we do have, I think, slightly fewer goats than the standard version of Nomad. So I'm excited about the regular Nomad. Uh, as someone who's playing in this tourney as well, that's one I'm going to have to work on. Well, let's talk about some of the other ones. Next one is Mired. Okay, so Mired, also a Nomad start. You can see the villagers started off in the center. And there's a lot of boars out here, okay? Players also start with a horse. You cannot attack with the horse, but it gives you a little bit of scouting. So players start in the middle, they'll likely town center out here somewhere, and then players will run into the middle to get boars and bring it back to their TC. And there's a lot out here. Uh, I can't actually double click to see how many, but I think there should be eight. And of course, there's stone and gold and everything throughout. But typically with the way the villas generate, they're going to be clumped up on one side. So the players are never going to end up directly next to each other, but they are going to be running to the same area to take the boars. Now, what will probably happen on this map is people could use the horse to try and block boars being brought in. So, like, if I'm bringing in a boar, which I can't do because it's an editor, the enemy could use their horse to block my villager. So it could get really messy, really lamey, and really crazy as the games progress. But yeah, this is going to be a good map for civs like Mongols, civs like Berbers maybe with the faster villagers. If you wanted to get crazy uh, and maybe, like, I don't know, um, mill over here, which would be a little silly. That's actually a stretch. Maybe Japanese. But yeah, that is mired. Majority of the wood ends up being in the corner. And that's about that. Next map is Inundation. Inundation. Another one where you start towards the center. And you've got a hunt out here and you've got a horse. But you'll notice there's no boars. And then players have to walk over this. So you can walk over this in order to get to wherever they want to place their town centers. Now you'll notice, around the outer ring, there's wood, there's stone, there's berries, there's things like that, but there's no gold. So you could try, like you'd have to practice some build orders, but you could try and TC the middle, because you have hunt there. But I think if you create a lot of villagers out here, you're going to run out of wood, and then you're going to have to send villagers over here for a lumber camp. So it's, it's like, I like this map, because again, there's pressure in the middle, there's that temptation to TC right away to be on the gold, but I'm not really sure if that's the right way to play it. Of course, you do have the water aspect as well. 
these little uh, black squares, I think, are signifying some form of fish. No, I think that's a bug, actually. No, because this should be fish. If that's fish, that's a bug. I don't think that's actually anything. Unfortunately, the editor's a little glitched out, but um, I hope it kind of makes sense in terms of how this will play out. I have no clue what sieves are going to be best right. for this one. I think, like, Persians and Malians, which are traditional nomad sieves, could still be really good because they either have more wood or spend less wood on their buildings. But who knows, man? Who knows? All right. Uh, oh, sorry. That's another generation of inundation. Yeah, there's no way this is fish, right? There's no way that's fish. Let's take a look again at the next one. All right. This one is very different from any of the other maps we're seeing in Wandering Warriors Cup. This one is a classic and it is called Houseboat. Again, pay no attention to the flags because the flags are just indicators of where resources are spawning. Um, so there's not going to be flags when players are actually playing. But in Houseboat, you start with the town center, unlike the other maps we've seen. You start with a transport, Ready. you start with three villagers, and you start with a scout. Now, the old version of Houseboat, because this is a classic map, if you've been in my community for years, 2016, I, 2017, I use this map a lot. But um, the one tweak we did make is that we added a house out here for both players. Um, because if you didn't have a house at the start, you would be pop capped with five population, and players would have to scramble down a house, and it was just really annoying. So, um, it is rather annoying to play, but you have shore fish around your TC to be able to bring in food, and then eventually you're transporting villagers to do everything else continuously all around the map. Um, and it becomes quite an expansive game, but also quite a different Dark Age, uh, quite different strategies you can go for in Feudal. You could fight on water here if you want to, but you also could go for scouts or archers or towers on land. And I'll show you a few different generations of Houseboat just to show where players end up being. But it's normally pretty easy to scout where the opponent is because you just have to scout their water, but doing damage to them is a different story. And so, again, just another generation. Pretty standard stuff, pretty open map, and uh, we'll produce some crazy scenarios. All right, the next one is Grapple. Uh, Grapple is another transport map, but it is also another nomad map. So, players will start in the center with their villagers, no scout in this one. And they will start with the transport ship on the icy terrain. And much like I left northeastern US to go to warmer Florida, you will want to hop inside the transport and you will want to go to warmer lands. <laughs> um, hopefully you don't run into any gators. Uh, this is not Florida, so you won't have that. Or any Florida men. But you know, players will transport over, drop a TC, and then it's scouting for resources like you do on Nomad. A lot of adapting. What's fun about this one is... While there is water, which can be nice if you want to dock, there's lots of shore fish. So you'll see players placing mills on this, and you're going to see a lot more focus on land than you would maybe on other maps where there is the dock potential. Uh, yes, there's fish in the center, but overall, villagers on shore fish is actually one of the fastest food sources in the game, and there's going to be a lot of reason to control the land. Uh, just to show you more generations, honestly, nothing really changes. Uh, except for the slight position they're in in the center. Players are almost always going to hop inside the transport. And that, my friends, is Grapple. The next one is Golden Hill. Now, Golden Hill was not originally a nomad map. And Golden Hill was mainly utilized in Mimi settings or community game settings. Um, but if you look at it, the players start in the most important area of the map. They start with their stone and golden berries but it doesn't seem realistic to ever drop your TC here. Uh, we might still see someone do it, but I don't think that'll happen. So similar to some other maps, they kind of start on a side, and then they will likely walk away from the important area, TC, and go back for it later on. The difference comparing this one to uh, the previous one is that this is a lot more focused on the center area. Like the previous one, you could spread out everywhere, and you'd be good, but like this one definitely in the mid game is more focused on the center. Uh, also, there's not uh, the previous one didn't have a way to cross the water. This one does because you've got those crossings there. So uh, there's a lot of different strategies you could see here. I'm not going to spoil them all, but I I like the idea as we're doing like a nomad slash transporting map to to use this. And uh, thanks to Crisini, of course, for all his work. I 
I found the, the original versions and was talking to him about how I wanted it structured, and it looks pretty darn good here. I might be biased, but I think it looks good. All right, the next one is Compass. And I feel like Compass is going to deceive everyone. I feel like Compass is a map where people think they have it figured out because they see the water, and they don't have it figured out. This is going to be a really fun one. So you start on an island. You start with three villagers each. And you start with two fishing ships each. So it's just like other maps, you're going to transport and then you need to find a place to go. Now if you check it out, here you've got desert terrain where you've got stone and gold. Here you've got grassy terrain where you've got stone and gold. There's four different areas. And it's possible, well, unlikely, but it's possible they could actually end up in the same area. Like if red were to go here and TC here and blue were to go to the same spot, they could end up in the same exact spot. And so you will have fishing. But you'll also have the ability for players to go to any corner on the map. And the thing about water control on this map, it will control fish, but it won't be able to range the stones and the golds. So I think the worry with any water map is that winning water wins you the game. It definitely helps here, but it's not going to give you enough to win the game. Again, I think it's going to produce really good games. Um, and there's a lot of crazy things that could happen here, truthfully. I'm not sure what's up with this snow here. I don't think that's... See, that's water, isn't it? That's an editor bug. But yeah, Compass is one of my favorites going into this tourney. All right, and then the final map in WWC is Boundary Brawl. Um, it, it is similar to some of the other maps out there, but it is, like, much different in terms of how it starts. So you start with three villagers, and you are next to... Berries, hunt, and more straggler trees. Straggler trees being the important thing here because in previous ones, you didn't have any wood. So like, this is as lamey as it gets. You're going to have villagers. Now they can't fight with villagers, but you're going to have villagers eventually like fighting for resources. Um, again, there's more reason to expand. There is also some reason to have some docks. But while the similarities are here between this and others, this one will probably be TC next to TC. And there also is vision, unless I'm mistaken. And I actually, shoot, I should have told you guys this about, I think it was Mired. Um, two of these maps, and I'll have to do my homework and put it in the comments on which one it is, have full vision in the center the whole time. So let's actually do a quick test. See this? So if we start off, and I drop my TC here, which I can't afford because this is an editor. <laughs> if we were to drop our TCs here, we could at least see where the enemy is when they're in the center area. Which leads to less uh, running into the enemy TC, which can happen a lot in early game. And makes it a bit scrappier for some of the boars and things like that. That's my little overview for the maps for uh, Wandering Warrior's Cup. The idea is to put players into different positions. Yay. The idea is to get people to practice and and put in more effort and not have an established meta. And I think it's going to produce some good games. Uh, I will be casting and Dave will be casting, of course. We are the we are both the hosts for this tourney. Um, all the best stuff is going to be streamed and all the best stuff will eventually hit the YouTube channel as well. And uh, I'm curious on everyone's thoughts, of course, what they're expecting for the tourney. But I'm pretty freaking hyped. <laughs> We put some work into it to get things prepared. I'm actually playing in the tourney as well. I'm seed number 55. Uh, we'll see if I... My goal is round three. My goal is round three. We'll see if I can work my way through the rounds and eventually get stomped. But uh, should be a crazy and different tournament. Uh, one that's very different from anything else we've seen in Age of Empires over the last two years.